certain degree, every song can kind of become its own little process. And things, you'll have incidental, you know, programming things, or things will happen, or tonality things that you'll get from jamming these things together, and it'll never happen again. And that, to me, is kind of the thing that's still fascinating about working with samples. I was a music fan that became a DJ through record collection, and that led to being interested in the sample fodder for the things of that era. Once it got to a point where I had, you know, X amount of times that experience of coming home with a record and finding a loop and being, oh, this is dope. This would make a good beat. Nobody's used it, and you have that over and over and over and over. And I was like, I gotta get an MPC. I gotta get an MPC. When I started doing this in the mid-90s, he basically bought an MPC or an ASR-10 or, or an SP-1200. 100% of the source material was coming from records. It was considered taboo to sample things that had already been used on a record. Everyone was in this race to sample something that hadn't been used, to find a new sound. And this is one of those things that contributed to people getting away from using loops on things and really, you know, like Premiere starting to chop things up. I mean, I remember it was such a big deal when you find like a Premiere sample from something like Hard to Earn. Because sometimes the things wouldn't be a loop. It's not the kind of thing you would listen to and say, that's funky or even that's usable. What that did is it broke things open so it wasn't just people looking for 4-4 four -four loops that were kind of in a funk type of vein. This is the drum break broken down from the song June, just so you can hear it. And that's in, you know, exact eighth notes or whatever. So all together, it would sound like. So that's just as it was right off of the record. And this was actually a one that it doesn't hit the, the, the low end on it really doesn't, you know, it's not like pounding. What I would do is basically reinforce or fortify the, the, the kick and the snare. And there's a million ways you can do that. You can take 808 drums, you can take other drums, you can blend five drums together, you can drum blend 100 drums together. You know, whatever works and whatever sounds good. So the way that this machine works, once you have a sound, you assign that sound to a pad. So that pad has, right now has, just says June 1. And then you can assign whatever sounds you, you want to whatever pads. So I could assign that same sound to two different pads, and I'll do that right now. So this is right now June 2. I'm gonna assign it to June 1. So now the same sound is on two pads. Now what I'm gonna do is take that and I'm gonna filter that second one down. If we get on to zero, it sounds like this. Um, and if we run the decay back, it might get a little shorter, might not tiny little bit, not much. So anyway, this is what you wind up with. If you run the resonance up on it, you'll get something that sounds like this. So it can get real subby. And then from there, you can pitch this up and down. At a point, it just sounds like crap, you know? Um, but there's, some, there's a sweet spot in there. I'm not thinking about key at all, even though that has like a bit of a pitch to it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm more just thinking about effectiveness. So let's go back to this original sound, this right here. And with this machine, I can arrange things so that pressing this one pad triggers more than one sound. So what I'm gonna do over here is put that, which is note number 36. That's 36. So now what you get is, now it's fort, that, just that kick drum is fortified. I'll play it with it and without it. So that's kind of a, a, a little trick that's there to reinforce stuff. This record that just came out today is a collaborative effort between myself and a friend of mine named Aaron Livingston. 
he wrote all of the vocal parts and the singing and all the melodies on that type of stuff and I did for all intents and purposes all of the music production it was my first real experience of producing an album with a singer and being in a more traditional production capacity. Aaron worked out perfectly. He's a great singer and he's a great lyricist. I have struggled to make DJ-oriented shows as interesting as possible. At one point in time, I became using four turntables and two mixers side by side because there was just more stuff that I could do. Sometimes things get triggered with the MPC. Sometimes I would make tracks or beats or whatever for a show and just hit play. You know, so then at a point it became, you know, like building electronics for the show and having, you know, a, you know, a wireless MIDI controller, you know, strapped to me and stuff like that. But it's always been this uh, continual aspiration to make the shows as interesting and engaging and musical as possible, both to challenge myself and really just to make an exciting show. I'm really at a point now where personally, I'm less concerned with quantity than I am with quality. I'm still trying to find a way for every single song to be a new vibe or feeling or aesthetic or, or whatever you want to call it. There's a physiological response that happens when you hear music and it excites you and we should be cognizant of that at all times when we're making music. If there was one most important thing I could possibly pass on to you, it would most likely be to chase fun with what you're doing. Be constantly looking for things that you enjoy and things that are basically fun and, and interesting to you. You guys might be familiar with this thing called the 10,000 hour rule. It's this theory that basically to excel at a particular field, you need to reach this threshold of clocking 10,000 hours in a particular field, basically. And really, in my experience, the only way you can do that is if you really, really love what you do. For both those reasons, for both the professional reason and just for your like spirit, soul, whatever you want to call it reason, chase fun. Enjoy what you're doing and put that first and foremost, basically. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.